So when the Surface Laptop 4 launched last week, my initial reaction, my first response to this whole product launch was, are these actually going to be good enough? Can they actually compete with the M1 MacBooks from Apple? Because these are very competitive. They're reasonably priced. They have good performance, crazy good battery life. These are tough to beat. Even if you're a Windows user, it's, it's hard to ignore what Apple has done with M1 MacBooks right now. So when these came out, and because Windows laptops in the past, they're not traditionally like good performance for the money, I, I had my reservations. So there are two main variations that you can pick up the Surface Laptop 4 in. They have Intel versions as well as AMD versions. And the AMD ones are like the base model. They start at $999. But unlike Surface devices in the past, the base model is very usable. This has eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. And traditionally, like the base model Surface product is usually just really under configured to the point where as a reviewer, you're like, why do they even make these things? It almost feels like they put them out there just to like upsell the better configured stuff. But the Surface Laptop 4, nicely configured. And it has an AMD 4680U processor, so that's six core CPU, seven Vega GPU cores. It's not like the latest and greatest Ryzen 5000 series stuff, but it is very capable, both in CPU and in graphical performance. But if you want to step up and upgrade it to the Intel version, this is a $300 upgrade. It's a pretty significant bump up in price. You do get more storage. It's 512 gigs of storage. But the biggest difference between the AMD version and the Intel version when it comes to the Surface Laptop 4 is in graphical capabilities. So these Intel versions are running the Intel XE graphics chips for an integrated device that is low wattage as these devices are, it's great. Now it's gonna depend on the game that you're playing, but realistically from the stuff I was testing, you're looking at a 25 to maybe 30% improvement in frame rate over the AMD version. So if that matters to you, if you're playing games, if you're doing stuff that's graphically intense for work, any kind of you know, GPU based workflow, the Intel based laptop is gonna perform better. Now the real question though, is how do these compare with Apple's M1 MacBooks? So. When it comes to performance, they're comparable, right? When it comes to this kind of price point and this kind of performance category, there's no product that really takes the league unless you're taking a specialized benchmark or a specialized application and comparing it like that, but that I don't think that's a fair comparison. So when it comes to performance, they're similar, but the real advantage that Apple's M1 MacBooks have had over almost every other product on the market right now is battery life. So Apple claims 20 hours of battery life on the M1 MacBook Pro. So this is a abnormally long battery life, right? And I've run the test, you can hit it. You can actually hit 20 hours of battery life. If you set the screen brightness to halfway, you do all the tests that, my, uh, that Apple has claimed that they do, you can hit 20 hours. I've done it. Realistically speaking though, you can get 13 hours of battery life of real use, okay? When it comes to these devices, the AMD version, Microsoft is claiming 19 hours of battery life. The Intel version, Microsoft is claiming 17 and a half hours of battery life. And these are incredibly long battery lives compared to the Surface Laptop 3. The previous generation of Surface Laptop had a claimed battery life of 11 and a half hours. Just the, the quick math is that these have a 65% improvement in battery life claimed. So I had to test this out. Like, are you for, are you for real? How did you jump up 65% in battery life without changing the architecture of this system? So I ran the tests and this is what we got on the Intel device. I got 10 hours of battery life, a little bit more than that. And then on the AMD device, I got 11 hours of battery life. Now these are not the 19 hour claim that Microsoft claimed. And part of me doesn't really care all that much because 11 hours of battery life on a 13 inch device is fantastic. It's better than most thin line devices out there. And it's significantly better than the Surface Laptop 3 from last year. I got seven hours last year. So 11 hours and 10 hours is very good. But I, I wanted to know, how did they hit that 19 hour number? So I looked on the website and it says they ran at 150 nits, which is really dim. But you know what, I'll play along 150 nits. And no matter what I did, I could never get it to 19 hours, even if I ran my loop at like the lowest energy consumption possible, doing like literally idling, couldn't hit 19 hours. So part of me doesn't care because 11 hours is really good, but I cannot hit 19 hours on this device, no matter what I did. 
I'm just putting it out there. But at 11 hours, you can easily last a day, maybe even two, without bringing your charger with you. It has an excellent battery life. Now, from what I can see, they didn't achieve this extended battery life through just software tweaks. It's got some hardware customization, like the CPU on the AMD unit. It's running a customized AMD chip. It's got uh, it's got some tweaks just in physical hardware to be able to maximize the energy efficiency of the system. But in general, I am I'm shocked. Like I've tested a lot of laptops on this channel and I've seen a lot of companies claim these stupid numbers and I always run the same test for consistency and reliability and I've never seen a Surface device go this long. So congratulations to Microsoft for delivering something that is, it's, it's very impressive. And I would say it actually competes with the biggest strength, the greatest strength of M1 MacBooks. So yeah, that's a good thing to see. Now, if you choose to pick up a Surface device, you get all the surfaceness with it, all the good and all the bad, right? So you get, in terms of the good, you get a nice design with a really premium finish to it. You get an excellent keyboard, a truly excellent trackpad, possibly best in class. You get the Alcantara finish on some of the units. You get a three by two aspect ratio screen with decent brightness and colors to it. We also get these thick bezels that run around the whole display panel. Now, personally, I don't love them. Obviously thinner bezels would be nicer, but I don't think it's too big of a deal when it comes to actual usage. Uh, you also get Surface Connect, which you either like or dislike. It's a very uh, controversial thing. I mean, more USB-C ports would be better for me personally, but some people like Surface Connect. We also have very quiet fans. These systems are always quiet and the Surface Pro 4 is as you would expect. But there's also the topic of color. So this year, there is a new ice blue color, which I actually like. It's a slightly lighter colored blue than last year's cobalt blue, but you can only get it as Microsoft tradition would dictate in certain configurations. You can only get it with the Intel chips. You can't get an AMD version with the blue coloring, which I think is a shame, right? I think if you like colors, you have to now choose an Intel chip, which is very Microsoft, but I don't like seeing. But you also have decent repairability. So on the bottom, there's no visible screws, but you remove the rubber feet and you can take off the keyboard panel. And in there, you can replace your SSD. So the ability just to repair or replace that drive is really nice in comparison to M1 products, but there's not much else you can do in there. And if you're wondering, the speaker system is above average, but they're still not as good as Apple's MacBook products. So my overall take on this is like, how do I view this product? I think these are really good. Like I didn't expect them to have the battery life and the performance that they would have, but they deliver. Now, when it comes to choosing between the two, like if you're someone that can go with either Mac OS or Windows, I would say that these are, like they're the first product that's come out this year that's made me go, hmm, I would recommend these. Like if you're looking for a thin and light laptop, usually it's been like, you know, that $999 MacBook is pretty good. It's hard to beat, but these, because the battery life is so good and because the performance is on point, I, I like them. I think that these are very easy to recommend for the person that has this kind of budget, right? If you want that premium thin and light laptop experience and you want good performance, and you want good battery life, these deliver. I will say the AMD one's the one, like that's the one I would choose because graphics when it comes to this type of graphics, like it's, it's not like gaming good graphics, right? It's just acceptably good. I would go for the AMD. I just wish it came in the better colors, but there you have it. Surface Laptop 4. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.